Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. It's me, Henry. Today, we're going to continue to learn the fourth chapter of the book, The Way of Life by Kazuo Inamori. Live a life with altruism, section 8 until section 13. Let's get started. Section 8. Japan, let the true and wealthy nations be the national policy. Well-intentioned thinking and evil thinking naturally lead to different results. For example, when arguing with another person, I'd especially want to refute the other person and let them admit their shortcomings. I think it is better to be considerate for each other and work together to find a good solution. When solving the same problem in this way, the results will be very different. In the past, when Japan-US relationship was very tense due to the close nature of the Japanese market, I proposed the establishment of a Japan-US 21st century committee to conduct candid dialogues on various issues between the two countries. At that time, I suggested that each other should blatantly accuse each other for being wrong. If you don't consider the other party's real situation and blindly say you're not right, no, it's right for you to make concession. In this way, there will be no consensus on those who can be unanimous. Conversation that only aim at gains and losses or arguing about winning or losing must end in fruitless and even resulting more distrust. Therefore, we must first respect the other party's position, not just stick to our own opinions, but also fully care about the other opinions. Using altruistic thinking as a foundation can bring benefit in healthy conversation. Moreover, I think Japan should take the lead in making concessions if necessary. Why? Because after war, Japan was revived and grew up from receiving a lot of favors from the United States, sparing no effort in providing food and technology or opening up a huge market for Japanese products. Even if it is a link in the American war strategy, they are very tolerant to us. This is an indisputable fact. So this time, we express consideration to the other party, tolerate to the things supposed to tolerate and practice altruism. Isn't this the duty and the obligation of Japan which has become a country with economic power? Based on this purpose, the committee submitted a proposal to the governments of Japan and the United States after a two-year discussion. In designing the future, model of the country, the key word is not only the spirit of understanding, caring for others, but also the strategy of building a country based on morality. In the past, Professor Haita Kaokatsu of the International Center for Japanese Cultural Research once talked about that virtual and wealthy nations. He proposed that a country is built not by wealth, but by virtue. That means the ability to effectively use wealth and repay other countries' nations, building model with virtue. It is not through force or economic strength, but through virtue to do good deeds to other countries and gain trust and respect. I'd also think that Germany should be the basis of national policy. This should be the case that Japan, which has been punished for pursuing its own interests, set an example before other countries. Japan's goal should not be neither an economic power or a military power, but to rebuild the country with Wuchu. It is neither a country that is good at making small calculations for self-interest, nor a country busy in showing off its military power but the were true of the noble spirit of mankind as a national concept and connect with the world. Once it becomes such a country, then Japan will be recognized and respected by the international community. Moreover, there will be no people attempting to invade Japan. In this sense, it should be the most appropriate security policy. Section 9. Is this were true forgotten? Mr. Sun Wen, the father of the Chinese Revolution, gave a famous speech in Kobe in 1924. In this speech, Sun Wen compared the kingdom and dominance of European and American culture and East Asian culture. 
The culture of domination of people by force originated in Europe and America. On the other hand, the royal way has a long history in East Asia, guiding people to abide by morals. Sun Wen warned that Japan, which was inclined to expand its armaments and expand its territory, should choose kingdom rather than hegemony. Regrettably, Japan chose to be domineering and went straight to World War II. Moreover, after the end of the war and until last few years, the policies of economic hegemonism has been adopted. However, if the country and the people do not take compassion and altruism as the foundation of the benevolent attitude towards life, I'm worried that Japan will make a big mistake again. In Tiantai Center, there is a saying of forgetting oneself and altruistic, which means just like the words. This is the teaching of Buddhism to forget yourself and do your best for others. Because the pronunciation of forgetfulness and altruism sounds like it's beyond discipline already. Tiantai patriarch Keiji Yamada once taught me, pursuing material desires is already beyond discipline. From now on, I will leave my own things alone and do my best for others. The reasons why I emphasize this is because I strongly feel that the virtues of compassion and altruism have been lost in today's Japanese society. If compassion or altruistic belief are forgotten, only selfish desire are left, isn't the result of no tolerance and lazy fat manifested in the present state of the world? In the past, there have been incidents in Japan where a 19-year-old boy killed a family of four. Due to the seriousness of the crime, the criminal was sentenced to death even though he was not an adult. The juvenile explained the law and he thought that he would not be sentenced to death no matter what he did if he was not an adult. Regarding this matter, the journeys who reported on this incident wrote if the juvenile understand the laws, then the incident may not happen. However, before the juvenile knows the law, he should know the fundamental morality and ethics of not to kill. Before talking about killing or hurting people whether it is a legal issue, we should aware of the life attitude that refers to the morality. Section 10 Moral-based personality education is urgent. Why have you lost the most fundamental code of ethics? Where are the sympathy and altruism? In fact, the answer is very simple, mainly because the adults did not teach the children. Approximately 60 years have passed since the war, and it can be said that the Japanese nowadays have not received any moral education. I am a more educated person before the war, so I am very aware of these situations. The meaning of respecting rights has interpreted as lazy fare. This is because granting too much freedom and no education is given to people. As human beings, we have neglected the ethics and minimum necessary rules to manage social life that we should master. In the past, we were told that the religious represented by Buddhism and Christianity were the guidelines of each person's life. These religious teachings have become the ethics in our business life. Even if you do bad things secretly, you can't escape from the eyes of God and Buddhas, so you'll be punished. And those who accumulate good deeds in obscurity will not be ignored by gods and Buddhas. This concept comes from belief which makes people have to think about what is the right rule of life. However, in modern Japan, with the development of scientific civilization, such a religion is not taken seriously. Along with it, the morality, ethic, philosophy, etc. that people should have are gradually forgotten. The philosopher Umehara Takeshi once said, the fundamental lack of morality lies in the lack of religion. I feel the same way too, especially in post-war Japanese society. Basic morals and ethics have almost disappeared. 
especially in post-war Japanese society. Basic morals and ethics have almost disappeared from daily life and education. This is a big difference between the pre-war and the autocratic rule with national Shinto as its core. On the other hand, the government emphasizes comprehensive education, but it fails to see any implementation materials for more based personality education. In addition, speaking of the importance of the personality education, it was not even teaching the minimum ethics that a person should master. Kindergartens also advertise free education, allowing children who have not developed physically and mentally to grow themselves. Therefore, before an adult, there is no chance to grasp the necessary minimum norms. In this way, young people in the period of physical and mental growth must learn and think about the serious question of how should people live. On the other hand, Society should create this kind of thinking atmosphere for them. Moreover, I think that in school education, students should be guided to establish a correct career outlook. Now in Japan, children with good academic performance are distinguished from those with poor academic performance, forming a social environment that preferentially treats the value academic qualification which greatly distort young people's career views. You can enter government departments and large companies smoothly if you get good grades, and your non-academic characteristics, such as ingenuity and good at receiving people things, have been abandoned. In order to correct the status quo, it is necessary to start education from elementary school students. They are 365 lines in society, Many people work hard in their respective industries. Therefore, society can be established and people can live. Vocational education should be implemented and practical knowledge should be imparted. For example, children who want to be hairdresser should know what kind of school they want to study and what qualifications they should attain. The previous chapter introduced carpenters who specialize in building temples. Whether they are carpenter or furniture craftsmen, tailors, farmers, fishermen, etc., regardless of their profession, they can sharpen their minds and improve their personality through hard work. The biggest word of education should teach the meaning of labor and the correct outlook on occupation and employment. Section 11. Build a New Japan, Don't Let History Repeat Itself After Japan entered modern times, it has ushered in major turning points in the cycle of 40 years. Number 1. 1868 broke away from the feudal society of the past and established a modern country through the Meiji Restoration, with the gold of clocks on slope, embarked on the road to prosperous country and a strong army. Number 2. 1905. Victory in the Russo-Japanese War. Joining the ranks of the world's power, the international status has risen by leaps and bounds. Later, the country became rich and strong, especially leaning in the direction of strong soldiers and make rapid progress on the road of a military power. Number 3. 1945. Defeated in the Second World War. From a scotch earth to a rich country, the economy grew miraculously. Number 4. 1985. In order to curb Japan's huge trade blacks, induce the appreciation of the yen, and promote imports, Japan signed a plaza according agreement with the other four countries. At this time, Japan ushered in the peak period of being an economic power. After the collapse of the bubble economy, the downturn has continued to this day. If you look at this cycle of prosperity and decline every 40 years, you will understand that Japan has always pursued material prosperity and competed with the other countries. Especially after the war, under the banner of economic growth supremacy, the ambition and desire to maximize the interests of enterprises and individuals continue to expand.
Even today, when the society and economy continue to stagnate and require a change of concept, the situation has not changed in the slightest. It is a change of a few tenths of a percent of GDP, and always happy with the growth of the economic index as the only good deed. This is based on the worries of desire as the driving force. Under the principle of competition for the survival of the fittest, and the abundance of materials as the top priority over varying philosophy, the so-called gentlemen ask for money become do not care about their means. We still have not escaped from this model of nation building and personal attitudes towards life. Obviously, we can no longer continue with these values alone, as in the past. Looking for countries positioning from economic growth can only make the country repeat the past forty years of ups and downs, and even can go to a return to the bottom that is comparable to the defeated war. This rate of decline will be difficult to control. The national and local fiscal deficits are increasing. The administrative and fiscal reforms have been delayed. And the decline in social vitality caused by the low birth rate and the aging population has clearly emerged. If it continues to develop in the next 40 years, 2025, not only looking forward to a bright future, the country itself may be facing a crisis of destruction. Now, we need to establish a new national philosophy and personal life philosophy that will replace economic growth supremacy. This is not only a country's economic issue, but also an extremely important issue related to the international community and the global environment. As long as human mankind's endless pursuit of economic growth and consumption is not changed, the limited Earth resources and energy will eventually be exhausted, and the Earth environment would also be destroyed. If this continues. Not only will the country of Japan be destroyed, but humans will also use their own hands to destroy the earth on which they live. Knowing this, or unknowingly, in the ship we are sharing together, that is going to sink. The greediness for comfort. We must be aware of the emptiness and the danger of this type of behavior as soon as possible. And plan a new nautical chart based on a new philosophy. Section twelve: In the coexisting biological chain, humans should learn to be satisfied. So, what kind of new philosophy should mankind pursue? As the fundamental philosophy of Japan and Japanese people's outlook on life in the future, it can be summed up in one sentence: That is satisfaction. Moreover. It also includes gratitude, humble attitudes that result from it, and altruistic behavior that are considerate of others. They are models of contented lifestyle in nature. Herbivores eat plants. Carnivores eat herbivores, and the dung and carcasses of carnivores return to the land to nourish plants. From a macro perspective. The world of animals and plants that eat the weak and the strong is also in the harmonized biological chain. However, unlike humans, animals do not destroy the chain of life on their own. If herbivores are driven to eat up plants by their desire, the food chain will be cut off. The creatures behind will face extinction. Therefore, they are instinctively restrained and do not have greed that exceeds their own needs. The male lion does not prey when it is full. This is not only instinct, but also a satisfaction way of living given by the Creator. It is precisely because of mastering the contented way of life that nature can maintain long-term coordination and stability. Shouldn't human beings also learn the temperance in nature? Human beings originally live in the natural world. The ones took care of themselves from the natural world and regarded themselves as a link in the biological chain. Later, human beings were liberated from the shackle of the food chain, 
And while getting rid of the shackle of the laws of biological circulation, they also lost the humble attitude of coexisting with other creatures. In nature, only humans have high wisdom, can produce food and industrial products in large quantities, and possess technology to improve production efficiency. However, soon, human intelligence evolved into arrogance, and a desire to dominate the nature world was created. At the same time, contented temperance collapsed, wanting more and wanting to be richer, and finally fell into a vicious cycle threatening the Earth environment. Section 13. When mankind awakens, the altruistic flower of civilization will bloom. In order not to sink into the water with the ship we are sharing together, we must regain the good behavior of natural restraint. The wisdom given to mankind by God should be regarded as true wisdom and master the art of how to control selfish desires. In other words, it is necessary to practice the spirit of contentment and a contented lifestyle. If you are not satisfied with everything you have, you will certainly not be satisfied when you get what you want. You want more. The excessive pursuit of wealth should end in moderation. The goal of the country and individual should not be the pursuit of material wealth. Spiritual wealth is the contented lifestyle. There is a saying that when you can't get what you want, cherish what you have now. Satisfaction is the sage. This way of thinking and attitude towards life is what each of us should have. Human beings should control their own selfish desire, have a tolerant heart of contentment, sharing with others, or a sympathetic heart of giving and satisfying others. Although some people may think that it is too good to say, and some may say that this is impossible. I believe that this way of thinking will definitely save Japan, and more broadly, it will save the planet. What needs to be emphasized is that a contained attitude to life is definitely not about satisfying the status quo, not making any new attempts, or standing still and doing nothing. Take the economic situation as an analogy. Although the total GDP has not changed, but the connotation of the industrial structure itself is constantly changing. That means all industries continue to die out and new industry continue to grow and develop. This is because human wisdom makes new things constantly emerge. Healthy metabolism continues alternately. People in society are full of vitality and creativity. If we can achieve such a state, won't we be able to go from growth to maturity, from competition to sharing the victory together? To realize the coveted vision and embark on the road of coordinated development, perhaps the altruism would give birth to a new social civilization. People today want to live easier, eat more deliciously, and earn more money. In the new era, to make each other's life better and happier, the flower of altruistic civilization based on compassion or love will definitely blown out. What kind of harmony and beauty of this will be? That's all for the sharing today. If you find values and like this video, please consider to hit the subscribe button and share. Most importantly, leave your message here and let me know what you think. I would love to read your comments and reply to your comment. I hope to see you in the next video.